WIOD presents Neil Rogers. To get in touch and talk, call 751 WIOD in Dade, 524 WIOD in Broward, or 655 and 278 WIOD in the Palm Beaches. Other areas may call collect. The opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Esta es el show de la mañana con Neil Rogers. Esta es su cerebro. ¿Tienes preguntas? Well... The real question is, how can a couple of washed-up talk show hosts uh, still be here on the air, you know? I just really wonder about that. Well, the trends will speak for themselves. Well, we'll get into that a little later on. I didn't hear that because I don't listen to that station anymore, at least not in the morning. And, of course, uh, not too many others do either. Mm. Uh, our horses at Gulfstream yesterday are still running. In fact, uh, they're in a match race now at the top of the stretch. And here they come, 90 years young. That was the bird's horse in the sixth race. Went off a 6-5 to five chalk and ran a desperate seventh. I mean desperate. He never made a move, if the chart is accurate. And my horse, not too much better in the fourth race. Jeff Stryker's brother, B.L. Stryker, went off as a two, little over 2-1 to one favorite. And ran a desperate fifth. Not that bad, though. He was about uh, a little over two lengths behind for the whole thing. So that's not so bad. But the uh, 90 years young. I guess he probably uh, <laughs> couldn't relate to running in Hallandale. That's probably what did it. I thought. Anyway, I got a story for you. I had three of the most incredible hours yesterday, speaking of Hallandale, that you could ever imagine. And even if you've got your morning newspapers and you've read the articles, you still... In, and even if you heard Steve yesterday when I called in twice and Norm Kent called in and we got into this again on the air, you still only have a part of the story. So let me just um, take a few minutes to try to lay it out, if I can say that. <laughs> yesterday, Norm Kent called in, what was it, a little afternoon? Well, like one, the last hour. One o'clock-ish. Yeah. There's Fat Bird. Now, don't say that, please. We've got enough problems already. <laughs> So anyway, Norm Kent called, and I guess it was after one, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, the Hallandale thing was off, that they had had an emergency meeting, and they came up with another resolution, deciding to table the whole business, and uh, they also, by the way, called off this coming Tuesday's meeting, just for your information. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize when he called in, and I found the little bits and pieces of this as the day went on, was that the reason that they gave, especially Sonny Rosenberg, for calling off the meeting was because of the threat of violence by my listeners if the meeting went on on Tuesday and we showed up over there. Mm -hmm. I guess Sonny's got a bad memory. Either that or he thinks everybody else does. Because two years ago when we did that thing in March at the Diplomat Mall over on Hallandale Beach Boulevard, we had thousands, literally, of people. I think there were two, 3,000 people that showed up altogether during the four-hour show. There wasn't any violence. All of my listeners acted very, very well. There was only one person who was creating a disturbance, and that was some old Hallandale fart, some nasty, rotten douchebag who was uh, yelling obscenities, homophobic obscenities at me and yelling obscenities at my mother, which was very charming. But other than that, everybody was on their best behavior. But this is a nice excuse to try to get out of this thing. Rather than admitting that they made a mistake and that were, they were being used and manipulated by our attorney friend from Coral Gables, rather than doing that, it was much more convenient and face-saving for them to say, well, we want to avoid letting them turn this into a circus. But at any rate, they allegedly were dropping the whole thing. So that's where we left it. Mm -hmm. I leave here. I go home. Out in the backyard with the puppies, by the way. We're trying them outside without a leash or anything now just to see. And they were just fine. And all of a sudden, the phone rings, and it's Sharon. Mm. Well, no, I take that back. There were a couple of the reporters from the newspapers who were wanting to call me at home for reactions and comments, and I had had a couple of calls. Then the phone rang, and it was Sharon, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but one of the reporters tells me that uh, this thing is coming unglued, that there's more to it. And then I called Norm Kent, and all the reporters start calling again. It comes to find out that Mayor Rosenberg tried what Norm Kent calls an end run around the rest of the commission, okay? In other words, for public um, consumption, they put this whole shenanigans on this meeting, and they said, okay, we're dropping everything. We're not sending any letter to the FCC. We're getting uninvolved from this thing, and we want to make up and uh, let bygones be bygones, which, quite frankly, I didn't know there was any problem with Hallandale until a week ago Tuesday, because other than the two or three bits we play on the air, just like the ones we play about Tamarack and Hialeah and any mm -hmm. place else, other than that, 
We don't talk about Hallandale. I mean, if it comes up naturally, I still got my comments, but we haven't had any running thing going. But being thin-skinned, which is one of Mayor Rosenberg's most serious problems in life, he just can't cope with the fact that, um, you know, we might poke fun at him and his city over there, at the sacred cow of Hallandale, the city of choice. <laughs> So, naturally, I immediately called Steve on the air. This was a little after the 4 o'clock news and, um, you know, unleashed what was going on. And this began a barrage of phone calls going back and forth and all around. And, and I want to say this. I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to put any of these people in a compromising situation. But the reporters were very, very cooperative, okay? And they have seen, finally, they have seen through what all of this is all about mm -hmm. very clearly okay Good. so all of the parties involved had really better govern themselves accordingly because um, you know as I said a week or two ago the worm has turned man and the shoe is on the other foot nobody is fooling anybody anymore with this hate campaign so as we were best able to piece it together this is what Sonny Rosenberg intended to do he was going to take the resolution that was passed two years ago in 87 and send that to the Commission which what? would have been still a way to have his own way. In other words, <laughs> avoid letting us come and speak next Tuesday, avoid yeah. letting the audience come and speak in opposition, and still manage to try to interfere with my job and this radio station just out of personal vengeance. Well, finally, at about a quarter after six, I get a call from another reporter saying, and you'll notice it's in the newspaper today briefly, because they had to keep re putting these articles back together, you know, a dozen times based on the way things were changing in three hours. <laughs> But uh, Mayor Rosenberg told this reporter that, well, he's decided he's not going to send out any letter to the commission and he's not going to become involved in this, but he just, he, he was wrongly uh, under the impression that that's what the other commissioners wanted. Oh, well, strangely no. enough, well, listen, the same reporter spoke to all the other commissioners and they all said that's not what we wanted <laughs> at all, including the city manager. Yeah. What they all had agreed to and discussed and what they wanted was to drop this and get it over with and go on with the important business that they're supposed to be taking over there in the city of Hallandale. But uh, Sonny, who's just got this burning axe to grind, man, who just can't let go of it, he was going to try one last time, and we, you know, and the word leaked out. See, if the word wouldn't have leaked out, he'd have probably tried to get away with that. Mm -hmm. Now, the amazing part of it is, and Norm called uh, Steve on the air yesterday, and he read me the resolution. And the amazing part of it is, this resolution was passed when we were at WINZ. That's right. Okay? Yeah. It doesn't even mention the call letters. It doesn't mention my name. But it says there is a station in the community that doesn't uh, conform to such and such standards. It's a long, convoluted piece of mung that doesn't mean anything. But the bottom line is if he would have sent that to the commission, it would have been, abs it would have been asinine. It would have made yeah. him even more embarrassed than he probably already is. Because it hasn't got anything to do with WIOD. Mm. How do you like that? Incredible. For stupidity. Okay? So if it makes you feel better, Sonny, you can continue for public consumption going on with these idiotic statements about the fact that uh, you don't want us to come and turn your city commission meeting into a circus. I think you guys already do a good enough job of that every week. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if that makes you feel better, go ahead and say it. You're not fooling anybody. Because our people have always acted like, ladies and gentlemen, your people over there are the ones who become apoplectic and behave like juvenile homophobic jackasses, okay? So the bottom line is there's no meeting Tuesday. There is right. no action anymore by the city of Hallandale. They want to kiss and make up, which I didn't know that we had anything to kiss about. Sonny doesn't want to kiss. Maybe make up, Are but not... Sure? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think Sonny wants to kiss. He's afraid he might catch something. <laughs> now, it says in the paper this was a tiff. Is that what it was? Is that, a tiff? A, is that what it was? I think they spelled it backwards. I think <laughs> fit was the word, and I think it was Sonny who had the fit. I think that that's where they became a little bit confused. But anyway, so that's where we are now, and I think that the audience uh, deserves to know. But, I guess, you know, it doesn't really boil down to being a victory of sorts. It's just that finally uh, these people came to their senses. Mm -hmm. And I heard some of the discussion about some of the discussion that went on in the background, and they knew that they had been had and that they had been embarrassed and humiliated again, but they just didn't want to admit that publicly. So here comes Sonny trying to say, well, gee, we don't want to want them coming over here turning it into a circus, and he can claim a victory, but we're just not going to allow our government to be disrupted. The bottom line is if they would go ahead and act like adults instead of like a petulant bunch of little children, we wouldn't have these problems in the first place. We could all go about living our lives. I think Sonny's quote was he didn't want some clown coming over turning the yeah. city commission meeting into a mm -hmm. circus. Isn't that what he said? Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Okay. <laughs> So that's where we are vis-a-vis -vis Hallandale, and of course there's an interesting, and it is a, a legitimate news story because it's in all the papers again this morning. Yeah. There is an, a paragraph at the end of the 
story in the Herald by Don Van Atta. The headline says, Avoiding Mess, Hallandale Halts Suit with, or Snit with Rogers. And the last paragraph says, and this is really classic, okay? The city's decision to back off just proves my point, Thompson said Wednesday. This is our attorney friend in Coral Gables. Now that the city has withdrawn the agenda item, it is just proof that the methodologies by Rogers to use his electronic bully pulpit are effective, end quote. Okay. So I guess I'm a bully, huh? Bully, he's, that's This old. coming from someone who has conducted a witch hunt for the last 19 months against me on three different radio stations who has uh, instigated uh, investigations into me by everybody but the CIA, but I'm a bully. Yeah. Now, I see, now that the worm is turning, there are some people who just can't deal with it, okay? And now that people are beginning to unmask all of this, and because it's a legitimate news story, we're now able to discuss it fully and freely... Uh, they can't cope with that. And I, I've been saying that to all these high-priced attorneys for the last two years now, mm -hmm. that if we could bring ourselves to a point where we could discuss this and let the public... You know, our listening audience are the biggest ally we've got out there. Of course. And if they're aware of what's going on, they're not going to sit still for it. No. And we continue to receive just loads of mail here. And uh, the fact... I guess we ought to give the fax number again, shouldn't we? Boy, I saw a stack Cheryl had this morning that From was the fax incredible. machine? Seven, I, no, it was letters. 757-7516 seven, 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 is that fax number. 757-7516. Seven, 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 For anybody and everybody except that idiot Wendy, okay? If Wendy still <laughs> wants to write love letters to Steve, she's going to have to use, you know, like a postcard. Or 20 pages of stationery. Well, now, speaking of that... Uh, this yes. will be of concern to Wendy. She'll want to know this. Oh, yeah. California State Senator has introduced a bill that would ban the electronic equivalent of junk mail, unsolicited mm -hmm. transmissions that tie up fax machines and waste rolls of expensive paper, no which is what kidding. Wendy has been doing. Yeah. And they can put a uh, trace on that thing just like they do on the phone. Can they? Oh, sure. Oh, and find good. out where it's coming from. Good. Which, you know, I don't want to start getting into a big thing with Wendy, whoever she is, but we'd like to keep it open for more important things if she knows what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do a little break, and then we'll get the show started and get officially on the road here. It's 10.15. Give my regards to Neil Rogers. Tell him that I've never heard a smuttier program in my life. 21 past 10 at WIOD. Now, we have something that Sharon brought in that's going to just make new hair grow on your head. You're not going to believe this. Well, yeah, you could use it's it. about time. And me, too. <laughs> it's a little book, okay, and it was written in 1922. A little, uh, In fact, look at the pages, man. It looks like uh, my dog got a hold of this. Sure does. And the name of the book is From the Ballroom to Hell, The Lure of the Dance. Oh. And it's a, how many pages has this got? About a 65-page book about the evils of dancing, okay? <laughs> and it's written by T.A. Faulkner. And he's got a little handwritten note. <laughs> in the front of the uh -oh. book. Now, this is legitimate, okay? It says, this book is dedicated to the memory of Mr. T and the Hallandale City Council. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Trust me. Not the Mr. T that, well, I wonder which Mr. T it could be. Yeah, I wonder. But anyway, um, here it is. T.A. Faulkner, a former dancing master, proprietor of the Los Angeles Dancing Academy and president of the Dancing Masters Association of the Pacific Coast. And, uh, oh, brother, it's just incredible about these satanic exhibitions of dancing. And uh, maybe we'll just read some of this later if things get a little bit slow. Mm-hmm. Now it talks about how the... Um, Dances start out very slowly, and then they kind of uh, accelerate into these horrendous, nasty, satanic events. Like dirty dancing? Like dirty dancing. I think that's probably... He was probably way ahead of his time. He probably had that in mind. <laughs> Footloose is about that, too. He says, I challenge you preachers and Sunday school superintendents who haven't enough moral courage to display the danger signal and take a firm stand against the dance evil especially those of your number who themselves engage in this form of lustful pleasure, mm -hmm. thus making you desire a desirable asset and direct ally of these vampires who keep the brothels replenished from your churches to sow seeds of corruption or allow them to be sown in your midst and not just reap what you have sown, rich worldly fruit, pardon the expression, <laughs> which will in time be plucked by the virtue-destroying monster prostitution. What? So I think that's probably good. Maybe they can do on one of those... Uh, TV tabloid shows. We don't want to mention any names, but maybe on one of those big exposés, maybe a Maury Puppet could do one of the shows yeah. on the evils of dirty dancing, which leads to prostitution. Yeah. In fact, I understand Geraldo's got a show on that next Tuesday. <laughs> so uh, we may have to read this on the air to try to save all of our wayward listeners in the audience. Okay, let's give the numbers out and see if this audience is alive today. I have my doubts. 
In Dade County, 751 WIOD. We have an open line there. And in Broward, 524 WIOD. Boca and Del Rey, 2789463. And in Palm Beach, which I think we went almost the entire show yesterday. I could be wrong, but we didn't have too much no going calls. in Palm Beach. Yeah. Now, maybe one or two from out of town, mm. but that was about it. 655-WIOD, 655-9463. We got a mobile on five. But you notice, Roger, I did not rush to the mobile because uh, we got a lo- bad lesson the other day about mm-hmm. mobile callers, okay? Even the cranks now call on mobile phones. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad uh, that this pulled through for you, but I just got a feeling this guy isn't done, you know? That he'll try something else later on. Meaning what? I don't know. It just, it just seems he'll never, he never quits. This doesn't sound... Let's hear your horn, pal. My horn? Yeah. All right, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a... What? He did beep it? Uh, how come it took him so long? A little slow, pal. If you're slow on the horn, man, you're finished on this show. Okay, two open lines in Broward, 524-9463. 524. Now, are they going to go through the same thing again that they did on Monday on the phone? I don't know. But, you know, in my car, my horn's like right at my uh, fingertips. Yeah. Well, he was a little slow on it, okay? <laughs> Maybe he had to reach over and hit the uh, cassette deck or something. I don't know what his story is. Uh, let's go to Sweetwater. Hello. Pay attention. This quality call doesn't last too long. Okay, well, most of them don't, Back sir. in, lady. You are a douchebag. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Have a nice day. Okay, thanks a lot. He was right. That was a really good call. <laughs> Two open lines in Dade County, 751-WIOD, 751-9463. I'm really glad I took the time to go through that whole story about what took place yesterday because it's obvious it's eliciting a tremendous amount of comment and enthusiasm. Like I said, the quick burnout of the audience has never been more evident than it has been during these past four days now. Man, it is just incredible. It's like, well, give us something new. Maybe we should try the uh, case on the air, you know, the case with the officer who shot the... Uh, I guess Steve did that yesterday. Oh, jeez. Uh, anyway, let's go to a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. How you doing? Okay. I've never called you before. I enjoy your show, your show and uh, you have my full support. I have to give you a Canadian story. About two months ago, I'm driving northbound on the turnpike listening to your story, and you just happen to be talking about French Canadians. As I pass a trucker, there is a car backing up on the turnpike. <laughs> I had to do a period like Gay Lafleur, so to speak, to avoid it. And all I could see... Gay Lafleur? Gay Lafleur. Uh, What's he, one uh, of those uh, hockey players who skates side saddles, sir? What was that? Something like that. Anywho, I had to do a abrupt turn. Of, I was on two wheels doing a pirouette around this French-Canadian, and uh, so to speak, it was just ponderous. Yeah. Hell of a story, pal. Hell of a story. But at least it lasted long enough till I found the cart. That's good. <laughs> Have a great day. I'm out of material. I That's obvious. You know when the call started. Thanks a lot, pal. We good really time. appreciate it. Do you believe that? By the way, if there are any Canadians left in town, we want to say it again. We don't have any uh, axe to grind with you. We don't have any uh, personal prejudice. Just go back where you came from, okay? It's nothing personal. We just don't want you here. That's the bottom line. Some idiot brought in a little Canadian flag. Now, he's not an idiot. He's a nice Italian guy. What was his name? Vinny or something like that? <laughs> What's a nice Italian guy doing with a Canadian flag? That's the question. Uh, Miami, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. It's been a while since I've called. But I got something interesting to tell you. Well, I sure hope so, because you'd be the first one. I'll guarantee you that. Okay. Uh, do you know the I-95 song? Yeah. I saw the guy sing it live last night. Oh, August uh, Campbell or whatever his have name you, is? Have you met him? No. The guy's a nice guy. The guy does a great version of it live. I would think so. I mean, I was sitting there. I had no idea. All of a sudden, he says, well, I'm going to do one of my songs here. And I went up to him and said, come on, that's not your song. I said, that's Neil's song. No. He says, no, that's mine. Great. Where was this? This was at Tobacco Road. Yeah, that's where he plays. Yeah. yeah, about yeah he's there all the time. Two o'clock in the morning. It was Is that his name, August Campbell? Mm-hmm. I think so. Yep. And he signed, wait a minute, he signed one to you. I'll, I'll drop it off. He signed your name to one of them. Great. One of these 45s. Mm-hmm. And um, that's about it. And those uh, idiots on the morning over at that other station? Yes, sir. You missed a couple of great comments somebody told them, you know, but um, one I... guy called up. The only good thing they said was, sure happy it's Thursday. <laughs> you know what those initials are, right? Yeah. Okay, have a nice day. Okay. Get a life. All right, 1028 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade. Things are starting to pick up just a little bit. We don't, you know, expect too much here today, but uh, get with it. Will you please? 751-9463. And the Palm Beach line, of course, is still as dead as a doornail, which is comforting. It's good to see that uh, they're not getting overly distraught in Palm Beach. 655 655- <laughs> W-I-O-D, 655-9463. Yeah, they've been, uh, I guess they want to suck us into some kind of an on-the-air battle with them over there at Zeta. And we're delighted oh, yeah. to give them all the publicity that they want. We gave Joey all the publicity you could ever give anybody. And, of course, he's been off the air for about a year now. 
And uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, just, they, the show sucks. That's the bottom line. Caprita's still, we think, a good guy, although I'm afraid he's going to get... He's going to get pressured into yeah. joining that. You know, when no you're question. in the Army, yeah. when you're in the Army, man, when you're in the military, they just uh, pressure you into doing a lot of things. They brainwash you. And what they're doing to us, it's called baiting in the business. Well, and, I understand uh, the colonel's a master at that. Baiting. But uh, <laughs> that's another story for another show. But uh, anyway, they're just uh, getting apoplectic. And now they're not just attacking you, they're attacking me as That's well. Correct. Of course, we're just a couple of washed up talk hosts. Is what... mm -hmm. Did you hear that with your own ears? Yes, I did. Wow. This morning. I Why had are a... you listening? Well, I had a radio accident. Oh, again. did you? Now, um, we got to report that to Metro that yes. you had a radio accident Would you this morning. Please, there seem uh, to be so many of them in this town. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's good to know that we're just washed up because I'm anxious. Today is the 16th. In eight days, it'll be yes. the 24th. A week from Friday, the new, a week from tomorrow, as a matter of fact, right. the new trend will come out. And I want to say this pubically, okay? If the colonel breaks a two in the morning, it will be one of the great miracles in the history of broadcasting, okay? Because I don't think he's going to do it. The trends will stand by themselves. Because they lost half of our morning show audience over there in, in, a, in six weeks. Yeah. Six weeks, they went from a 5.5 five to a two eight, which I must commend them on that because it hasn't been duplicated very often no. in the history of the business. I've never seen it. I mean, that. generally, you can lose most of the audience, but it takes a while. No, but they no. like, it's like dropped off the face of the earth. And I know we're washed up, but it's amazing that we're over here making all of this money with these gigantic numbers and all these young demographics, and they're over there sucking the big one at mm -hmm. Zeta. Isn't that amazing? Envy and jealousy is what I no, attribute. No, come on. Yes. Envy you and jealousy. Away now. And they we will... take the mobile on the Palm Beach line? Are you I don't really want to interrupt in a you in hurry to sentence. do that? Yes. Really? Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay, I knew this was going to be a great call, it's sir. It's going to be one. I'm telling you right now. How are you, Glenn? Go ahead, sir. How'd you like the Academy <laughs> Awards, Glenn? It's very... <laughs> Did you enjoy it's it? very well. No wonder you interrupted yeah, me. Yeah, I knew it was sentence. a great call. I have my psychic thing How on. How you again. doing, Barry? Good. You enjoy the award nominations? Uh, Rain Man is my pick. Okay. Justin Nobody's Hoffman. talking about it at all. Mm -hmm. Neil, I got to tell you something. Steve's upset because Pumpkinhead didn't get it. <laughs> Neil, I got to tell you something about the Hallandale situation. Yes, sir. You don't realize, but there were a lot of things going on behind the scenes on your behalf, which resulted in the action that was ultimately taken. Now, the only question I have to ask you is this. If mm -hmm. the end result is what you wanted to accomplish, does it matter what means to accomplish that end results were utilized to get there? Oh, absolutely. When a mayor tried to do a devious end run like that, I mean, you've got to understand, that would never have been accomplished if that, if that little piece of information hadn't slipped out to some of the reporters and if the city clerk hadn't had a little slip of the tongue. I have a feeling that the illustrious mayor would have gone ahead on his own, unbeknownst to anybody, and uh, carried out with that plan. That's but just my feeling. He, he might have done that, but I can assure you as a personal friend of the city attorney that a lot of stuff was going on behind the scenes to end the fiasco. Good. And at least the end result was taken care of, and uh, I hope you're glad that it was Oh, I'm, deli I'm delirious. I'm very pleased that it's uh, taken care of because it's, it's embarrassing. It's silly, and it's also dangerous when, when people in government allow them. So, you know, it's one thing when some douchebag out there, you know, in a community who doesn't know any better gets conned by someone who's trying to conduct a witch hunt. But when people in government start jumping on the bandwagon because they're hearing things that they like and somebody's whispering a sweet nothings in their ear that sound appealing, then you really got a dangerous situation. So right. I'm well, very, very pleased that the saner minds prevailed. You're welcome. Uh, despite some of the uh, outrageous statements and sentiments coming out of there, there were some uh, saner heads and cooler heads that ultimately prevailed after some uh, cajoling over the telephone by some friends of yours and Glenn's, et cetera, that, right. uh, that uh, I'm glad it worked out well for everybody. Okay, thanks a lot, pal. Take care, buddy. Have a good day. So long, Glenn. Okay, Barry. Okay, well, we just broke a record for the week, ladies and gentlemen. It's only 10.32. We already had a call on the Palm Beach line. It was a good call. It was a mobile, so we really have done it already. We might as well go home, right? Well, he just used that line because it was... Because he could get, get right, right through. through. And you yeah. can do that again. That's the only open one now. 655-WIOD. <laughs> 655-9463. You're not going to finish your sentence? Oh, what was I saying? That's what they asked Bundy, too, last <laughs> week. Anyway, I want to tell you about every OD. 1037 at WIOD. I want to tell you one thing, you know, and I said this all consistently during this week. I have, since we've been here, which is, what, 15 or 16 weeks, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, these people are, like, so out of it now. It's like nothing that you tell them or nothing that's going on is of any consequence. When we went into the break, every line was lit except Palm Beach, and now, like, three, four people have dropped off, Okay. So if you want us to go back to heavy topics, we can bring in, we can do abortion today, all right? We can do that for you. In fact, the show is already turning into one, so we'd be delighted to do that. But I just, uh, I'm in shock at the way these people are. It's like, well, we did that other stuff last week. What do you got new for us this week, okay? 
We're sick and tired of that. Get us a new toy. Uh, two open lines in Broward, 524 WIOD. The Palm Beach lines, I will not wait. I won't even dignify them by wasting my breath, okay? Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Uh, I'm not too sure, pal. Well, I'd like to congratulate you on how it worked out. Let me just tell I you. I think about... those guys at Zeta have got a real point. You know what? I think we're washed up. I think it's getting ponderous. The community's burned out again. We've got to have something something a little more shocking for them, okay? Like coming and doing the show in the nude like Geraldo or something Maybe like you can that. Try that. That would Neil, be shocking. I haven't, listened to, I haven't talked to you in three years. I just got back to Florida. I'm here on vacation. I used to listen to you all the time. You're the first talk talk show host I ever listened to. And uh, I went crazy trying to find you on the radio when I got here on Tuesday. Called up WYNC. What do you mean you went crazy trying to find it? I mean, it's not that... It's it's a great show, but it's not that important, is it? Well, I enjoy it. Well, that's great. Yeah. I enjoy Rocky Road ice cream, too, but I don't go crazy if I can't have it, you know? <laughs> well, I called up WYNC. They yeah. said... We don't know who you're talking about. We don't know who that is. Oh, yeah, come right. on. Yeah, they only listen every day. <laughs> yeah, we want to say hi to all our friends over at uh, WYNZ and Zeta. Blasting. Because we know that it's blasting all over the building there in Carroll City. We hope you're having a wonderful day. And just wait till that book comes out, babe. <laughs> if you think you've hit rock bottom yet, just wait. Uh, that's what I did. I called them at, you know, 8 o'clock at night, and they said, no, we've never heard of that person. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. know who that is. Well, at 8 o'clock at night, why didn't you call them during civilized hours? Nancy, the receptionist, is a good friend of ours. She's a very nice lady, and she would have been glad to tell you where I am. But I did, I found out where you were from the Weekly News. Who, really? Yeah. Oh, one of those, huh? One of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to straighten your wrist out, pal. Well, we'll try. But I'm glad everything worked out. Is there anything we can all still do for you other than writing to your station? Well, just writing those letters of support to Mike Disney is the important thing. We want to, uh, although I have my doubts, I mean, we've got a tremendous response. Don't get me wrong. But it's okay. like, it like peters out because you can't keep mm -hmm. the attention of the people in this town more than for a few days. And then all of a sudden it's like on to, you know, bigger and better things. Uh, you know, whatever happened to Bill Calder? Uh, he just got a job in New Orleans. Oh, so he's out of the market. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, he's been out of the market. I mean, he's been living here, but he's been out of the business for a year and a half, so I'm very uh, delighted they got a job. Well, like I said, I haven't been here for three years. Yeah, but well, you got a lot of catching up to do, okay? In fact, you need a scorecard. Uh, get a pencil with a big eraser and a scorecard, and we'll keep you posted. Okay, great. Okay, welcome back. Thanks, Bob. Bye. 1040 at WIOD. We have an opening in Broward now. If you move like a snail, 524-WIOD. 524-9463. It really is perplexing. I, one thing I've always said, and I continue to say it to you, I will never figure this town out. I can never begin to understand what motivates you people out there. Because, you know, we could be in the middle. They could have a hurricane surrounding the building. I don't mean like one of the football players. I mean like a legitimate, real hurricane. And it would be like, well, uh, this is <laughs> exciting, but uh, how about the early bird at Pumpernick's today? What do you think they got today, huh? I mean, I just don't understand. And I mentioned this the other day, too, about the difference between the people up north and uh, the people in this state is there's no passion here. I mean, when it comes to hating, they got a lot of passion, but that's about the only thing they can whip up a good passion for is hate. But like anything else, it's like, well, uh, we don't want to be bothered. We came here to get away from all of it. You know, that kind of crap, okay? God almighty, why don't some of you people wake up and live already? Uh, we have an opening in Boca, 278 WIOD, and Palm Beach goes without saying. Miami, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Hi, Bert. Hi. What do you sound so depressed for? Oh, no, I'm not depressed. Oh, I'm okay. at work. I thought you were I, getting oh, the no, Bob Lasseter show piped in from Tampa or something. No, no. Um, <laughs> Zeta 4 said it, you were midday a.m. washed up. Oh, I see. Not uh -huh. just washed up in mid in uh, a.m. Yeah. Uh, I have... What, what does that mean? In other words, because they're on morning drive now with their ones, they're doing a big number? No, oh, he was very impressed with his uh, morning show. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I'm glad the colonel is because nobody else is. <laughs> I have yet to hear anybody call in and say anything positive about that show. Anybody. It's pretty annoying. Even Caprita, when he calls, sounds depressed. At least he's getting a paycheck. Yeah, that's um, true. I have, Not much. I have so, a couple things. First... I don't know if this is old news, but Geraldo Rivera, his real name is Jerry Rivers, and he used Geraldo uh, Rivera to get into uh, college under a, a minority program. Good heavens. I never heard that. Where'd, where'd you read this? MS. Inside information. Uh-huh. In, like inside story? No, no. Nothing inside there. edition? Something like that. Like outside edition. <laughs> the second thing was... Well, uh, I got a better one for that. What's that? Okay, and the real story is that he's Joan Rivers' sister. 
<laughs> and he's going to be doing a show next Wednesday, revealing it on the air, proving to all America, okay? Now that the Billy Tipton story is out, uh, Geraldo's always got to do a little one-upsmanship, okay? And it's not a true story, but it, over the weekend, he's going to have a little operation, just like that broken nose. Remember with the skinheads? Now he's going to have a little operation over the weekend so he can outdo Billy Tipton. I mean, anything you can do, Geraldo can do better. Which body part will he Well, you, uh, <laughs> you'll have to guess. The second thing was, uh, I live up in Plantation and went into the, I have the same absurd cable company that you have. Yeah, we don't want to mention Continental Cable, right? Right. And I said, I want my Cubs. I want WGN. And uh, How long did it take before they stopped laughing? <laughs> well, they turned to me and said, we have uh, two super stations and that's all you're allowed. WOR and WTBS. And I was like, well, get rid of them. Yeah, get rid of TBS. We don't want to see the Braves. Who the hell wants to see that? Useless. And they could solve the problem by trading Dale Murphy to the Mets like they were going to. Then we wouldn't have to worry about losing the Braves. Just, uh... You have heard, by the way, it's seriously, I've mentioned this several times, that Ted Turner is going to get even with the people who are pissed about him putting the black and white movies in color. He's going to televise the Braves in black and white this year. Yeah, that'll get you. That might draw some... Just to get even. Then they'll have two or three people watching the yeah. Braves. Now, anyway. in defense, he does have Leave it to Beaver now. I think that should be on the record, don't is you? It, is it colorized? Yeah. <laughs> All except Tony Dow. They don't, want to get, they don't want to get anybody too excited. Take care. Have a good okay, day. have a great day. we got quite a call on 8 now from Miami. We says that the other caller is wrong about Geraldo. Is this a spy report, sir? This is a spy report, Neil. Okay, let, let us have it. Um, Geraldo Rivera's real name is Geraldo Rivera. Really? Yeah, I got a, a guy that, a friend of mine that uh, worked for me last summer is his cousin. Mm hmm And what's his name? <laughs> Jerry Che Guevara? No. Jerry Rivers. Jerry Rivers. <laughs> no, the, the, the myth about Jerry Rivers was brought up by a guy that didn't like Geraldo and was trying to get back at him. You know, taking shots at I can't him. imagine anybody not liking Geraldo. Oh, I know. It's, a, it's a, you know, something rare. Other than the 240 million people <laughs> who live in this country, I can't imagine anybody disliking Geraldo. Now, this was, this was during the time of uh, Geraldo's... Um... I want to tell you how much the government dislikes Geraldo. Do you realize that they're voting in Congress this week on whether to declare a national holiday on the anniversary of the day he got his nose broken on a TV <laughs> show? <laughs> No, but this was during the time of the uh, the vaults, when he screwed up the vaults. Oh, yeah. When people Al Capone's were, vault. Right. When people were you know that Henry Barrow's shot. pretty ticked that he didn't get a shot at that bottle, by the way. <laughs> he was, people were taking shots at him left and right, and that was one of them. One of the guys said that his name was really Jerry Rivers, and he changed yeah. it to Geraldo Rivera so he could get, it, so he could get the uh So, in other words, it's just an ugly rumor. Right. Kind of like right. Geraldo. Now, is, now, is uh, Ted Turner decolorizing game shows or what? He's decolorizing the Braves. He's decol oh, okay, so we've got Brave, he Brave games in black and white. Yeah. Anybody up there at Continental Cable who believes that we can't get WGN, boy, you're living in a dream world, all right? You just don't want to give it to us because it'll cost you some bucks, and you're just a bunch of douchebags up there, okay? But I'm putting the satellite dish back up next month, so don't worry about it, all right? I'll give you all a... Uh, we'll, we'll do a little segment on the show every day. I'll give you a little uh, capsule summary of the Cubs game. <laughs> yeah, but Neil, when the Braves Great. were in black and white, weren't they good? Yeah. When they were the Boston Braves. Right, that's, you know, when TV was black and white. Yeah. So if Ted Turner decolorizes the Brave game... When Warren Spahn was pitching. Well, listen, have a great day, pal. You ran out of material a long time ago, but thanks for the inside information. We have an open line in Palm Beach. We have had two calls on the Palm Beach line already this hour, which is pretty damn frightening, okay? It's 1047. Palm Beach is open just in case a miracle might strike. 655-9463. 655-WIOD. I want to tell you about D. 1051 at WIOD. What are we up to now? Look at that. Rich's pants are falling off. Yeah. Almost 50 pounds. Uh, I've never seen that. Close to 50 never been. Look pounds. At that. Look at that guy. Unbelievable. Baggy. Baggy pants. Okay, well, that's good. We're on our best behavior. He even brought in one of those mixing things. I had my tomato soup, my Nutrisystem, uh, before I came on the air, and that thing mixes it up like <laughs> fantastic. This man is just He's amazing. Unbelievable. Right? Beyond description. Here's a mobile in Dade. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Great. How you doing, Glenn? Okay. This is Richard Vega again. Richard. Hey, hey how, you how you doing? doing, Rich? Doing fine. Okay, how's just, everybody else doing? Everybody's doing wonderful. How really? they doing over in Carroll City? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been by there in a while. Really? Well, you ought to stop by. I understand they're very depressed. Well, after the book, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait till next Friday, boy. First of all, I like the uh, the qualifications to get on. If you say you're in a mobile, you have to beat for uh, Roger. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of we've had a lot of uh, goofballs trying to yeah. be mobile lately, and Roger wants to, to do it. it. I agree. Well, I'm in a mobile. I'll be 
There you go. Yeah. Uh, I just I just had to comment because of everything that's been going on in the, the uh, you know with you and everything and. Having made 400 copies of your show for 400 different attorneys and, and whatsoever. Oh, that's and right. The, the end result is nothing. You're still on the air. You're still doing the same thing. You know, first of all, I, I think you guys are the greatest. And if well, you're right, Rich. Any support that I can give you guys, believe me, uh, I'll be there. Well, we appreciate it. You know, it's, it's interesting. You were there, weren't you, yes, uh, yes. when we had that resolution from Allendale the first time? Yes, I had to make 400 copies yeah. of your show. Yeah. And uh, sure. when, when uh, Norm Kent read me that resolution yesterday, I had forgotten what it was, but it's the most convoluted bunch of garbage I've ever heard in my life, and it's just a lot of meandering BS that says nothing. And it doesn't even mention the call letters, but it says a station. And, of course, they meant INZ at that time. Yeah. So maybe if they want to go after somebody, and I say this only jokingly, maybe they ought to go after INZ's license, although I think they've already got uh, some ahead of them. Well, <laughs> like I said, I just, uh, it's ridiculous because, you know, so many uh, lawsuits and this and that and the other, you guys are still on the air. It's, it's just they're wasting their time, you know, yeah. you, you, you know and uh, I just want to give you guys my support. You guys are the greatest, and anything I could do, hey, you guys can count on me for sure. Thanks a lot, Rich. Talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye. 1053 at WYOD. We have an opening in Broward now where somebody just expired, as he said, that probably a Hallandale call. 524-9463. Uh, 524 WYOD. The amazing thing of it is, uh, Hallandale, we get all, we've had a couple of letters that I've gotten myself. I don't know what Mike Disney's getting in terms of mail from Hallandale, but, like, almost nothing. Yeah. On the phone. Have you noticed that oh, since this thing oh, has yeah. started? We've had a couple Phew. of the old farts who've tried to get through and disguise their voice. <laughs> you know, the, mouth, the heavy mouth breathers. But other than that, they've been real quiet. Of course, they couldn't be listening, right? Oh, no. No. Mm -mm. And it's rude to call when your teeth are in a glass anyway. Kendall, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. First time caller. Well, I'll be damned. Uh, I tried to get through yesterday. You're talking about greyhounds. Yeah. In fact, I did, and I got cut off, but that's beside the point. What do you mean you got cut off? I don't know. I was on, and... Got cut off. You mean you're on hold? Yeah. Well, today's your lucky day, pal. <laughs> Time's a wasting. Uh, when I was in high school, I worked for a vet, and I adopted a racing greyhound that he had. Yeah. And the tracks used to donate to vets greyhounds for blood donors. When they have operations or anything, they would take blood from the greyhounds. Why is that? Uh, because they were expendable, rather than get, getting... Oh, I see. Them. I got you. Uh, one other thing. I was at a basketball game a couple okay, weeks ago. Okay, before you go on about the basketball game, I hope that somebody will call in, because I was serious when I said yesterday, I'd really like to get involved with being able to give some information out on a regular basis as to where people can adopt those dogs, because they just, they get rid of so many of them in the most brutal way, and they just, uh, you know, it, it's like a game with these people. They well, just breed them, and then if they can't race, or if they get too old to race, they just destroy them. Well, they do, and I think if you contact the uh, the owners or trainers, you know, once they get too old to race, yeah. they're, not, they're not any value to them anymore. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yes. But that dog, I had it for about a year. A little bit too uh, hyper. Okay, moving right along. Okay, I was at a basketball game a couple weeks ago, my son's basketball game. My yeah. wife was next to me. I had a friend of mine who's an FBI agent on the other side. My wife said something to me, and I went, eh, eh. She said, don't do that. And my FBI agent said, bap, 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 bap. <laughs> Yeah, well, those FBI, FBI, those FBI agents know me real well because they've been investigating <laughs> me for so long now. They really uh, know me inside and out. All right, I'm out of goods and service. Well, that's obvious. Have a great day. 1056 at WYOD. Two open lines are both in Dade, 751-9463. 751-WYOD, North Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi, yeah. Glenn. Um, Two quick things. Um, don't feed your dog bones. Yeah, we already covered that yesterday. So I know. I'm just telling you. Because they by the way, my dog is just fine. He's doing oh, good. great. He's tremendous. Oh, great. In fact, he's so healthy that, uh, believe me, I could probably fertilize 10 yards in my neighborhood. That's good, because I got four strays I just picked up in the streets, like people hit with cars and left, and now they're they're great dogs, so, you know, they don't all have to be have titles or anything. And the second thing was, you know how you were talking yesterday about um, your trips to uh, Las Vegas and Hawaii? Yeah. Maybe if they invited Rosenberg and this lawyer, they wouldn't feel so left out and harass you. Well, there, I'd probably be trolling for sex again if I invited Sonny. He's a pretty uh, sexual guy. You well, know? May maybe not. Maybe it's just sour grapes. Yeah. Well, no, he was, they, they, you're getting confused now. They weren't the ones who are concerned about that. They're concerned about our alleged bashing of seniors in Hallandale, okay? Well, it I mean, is our attorney friend in the Gables who's concerned about the alleged trolling for boys on the air. 
Well, they're all just grasping at the straw. That is, or grasping at something, that's <laughs> correct. Okay, you have a good one. Thanks. 1057 at WIOD. Boy, we got some really terminal calls this hour. We have an open line. No, we don't. There it goes. Finally, they're getting with it, just as we're getting ready to do the news, mm -hmm. okay? And watch, when we come back after the news, most of them will be gone. Fort Lauderdale, Hi. hello. Hi, how you doing? Great. Great. Uh, did you see the new billboard? Which one? Uh, it's on Sterling and State Road 7. What is it, a Joey Reynolds billboard? No, it's for you. Neil oh. Rogers, 10 to 2. No. It's pretty Dang. nice. You Are you serious? I'm serial. Now, <laughs> that is shocking for this company to actually uh, fork out the bucks for a billboard. Now, they must be getting emotional. It's a good one, too. You is, gotta... hmm. is Disney on doggy uppers now or something? What's going on in there? <laughs> Where is it again? It's on Sterling and State Road 7, 441. Oh. Well, that's right near my mother's. I'll be damned. I'll have to have her go over there and investigate, okay? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know about it. Well, thanks a million. Okay. Bye. 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 What a shocker. Oh, we got a, oh. a fake mobile on, too. Hello. Hello, Neil. Oh, yeah, let's hear that horn, sir. Horn. Oh, <laughs> 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 That's great. So, how's it going? Oh, it's going okay. What do you got, like a ship to shore? Yeah. Oh, that's great. This one of those uh, boat horns. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can we do you for, sir? Well, I just, I just uh, was kind of worried about this uh, having to beat for the uh, mobile calls because yeah. uh, somebody can shoot you. Yeah, well, that's true. We don't want to. We want you to beep real quietly. Okay. This is yeah, one of the only right. towns in America where you can't honk your horn for fear of losing your life. That's that right, cool. here in Miami especially. Yeah. Uh, you're doing a great job, Neil. That's correct. Love the show. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Beep, well, I guess he didn't want to run up a big bill on that um, <laughs> ship to shore or whatever the hell it was. All right, we have an open line in Dave. We're going to take a picture of the board during the news, so let's make sure we have it all filled up. Uh, there it goes. Boy, these people are really getting with it, aren't they? Kind of. And we actually have a note here on um, on the uh, Hallandale situation from the fax machine. Boy, these people have slowed down to a walk the last couple of days, haven't they? Hmm. Here's that fax number again, 757 Seven five one six. If we have any more spy reports about what's going on in Carroll City over at the two hundred seven Drive, we sure like that too, huh? The mystery facts. The mystery facts are over there. Wants to give us a chapter three in the ongoing saga of what's happening with Rose Folger and his band of merry douchebags. We'd sure like to have that. We're waiting. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to pause for the news. Henry is on the floor in the newsroom now, and of course, by this time in the morning, he's generally over there, kind of like passed out after tasting some of those recipes mm -hmm. that Henry drinks every morning. Anyway, he's got the eleven o'clock report. We'll come back with our number two. 11.05. Steve, let's see, do we have a thing? A Let thing? me check it out. Oh, that's right. Wall Street psychic Deborah Lynch, who predicted the October crash two years ago, uh, and Meg Green, who isn't psychic, but sometimes a little psychotic, they're going to be on with Steve at 2 this afternoon. WIOD, and we have, look at that, all the lines are lit. Isn't that exciting? Well, the TV people are here. We have to Oh, is that, that what it is? Yeah, sure. we've got people here from Channel 7, so oh, we, better, yeah. we better put on a really impressive performance, okay? <laughs> or else. And, of course, based on those callers in the first hour, in fact, uh, the reporter's in a coma here already, so don't get carried away. Boca, hello. Neil, how are you doing? Hey, we're doing it, pal. Good. Hey, it's uh, kind of ironic that uh, the people from Channel 7 are there, because that's what I wanted to tell you about. Uh, have you watched the Arsenio Hall show? I don't. I hate that show. Do you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Although he does have Bobby McFerrin on tonight, and the people at Channel Four are pretty pissed about it too. By the way. It, who is he? Bobby McFerrin. Don't worry. Be happy. Oh, oh. oh you've you're forgotten uh, already. You're out of it. Boy, you are really. I told you, people in this town got a short memory. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Olympia Dukakis was on the other night. And uh, she asked him about his name, and he said it's Greek for Leroy. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. He looks uh, more like Leroy to me than he does Arsenio. <laughs> I must be honest with you. All right. How you doing, Bird? Okay. You weathering the storm? What storm's that? Oh, this one? Yeah, yeah sure. They can't turn it off. That's right. They can't turn it off. Especially it is, it is amazing that the audience seems to have reached the point of being totally oblivious about any of this. You know, I, I, did you hear the beginning of the show? Yeah. Did you hear my little uh, rundown of what happened yesterday with the Sonny Rosenberg and our friends in Hallandale? It's like such a scam. Yeah, and it's just, it's amazing to me. You know, I go through that 15 or 20 minutes. Of course, the audience doesn't want to break their usual pattern, and that is that no matter what I talk about at the beginning of the show, they avoid like the plague. They don't want to, you know, shock me by responding to anything that I say. Well, that reminds me of that great old story. Got any Feldine, by the way? Exactly. You go ranting and raving as she gets on the phone. Doctor. Yeah. 
That's a great story. I mean, these people that think that talk shows are going to change anything in this town, they're in a dream world. Hey, I Neil? mean, the people that came here are, they're walking vegetables. They're the walking dead. <laughs> here I bring, I got to, I, I hate to do this, but I got to take 20 seconds to tell that again. I bring on this doctor, this physician whose practice has been destroyed. His family life has just about been destroyed because of his cocaine addiction. He gets himself straightened out. He makes this miraculous comeback. He tells this this traumatic story, and we go to the phones, and the first caller is some 900-year-old bag saying, Hello, doctor, can you tell me about Feldine? I'm on Feldine. <laughs> That's this town, sir, in a nutshell. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Want to hear an, uh, an outrageous public story? Yeah. My wife's there in line, and there's this lady buying about 50 cans or little bottles of baby food. Yeah. And she's got a little toddler, just an infant, like six months old, and another little one there. These old farts are behind her going, hurry up, hurry up, you know. So my wife goes and helps this lady get all these little baby food bottles on the belt. And they're bitching and pissing and moaning the whole time. So my wife leaves her, gets done with the baby food and the lady. They take off. She sets her purse right by the cash register there. And this old lady's going, whose purse is this? Whose purse is this? And... <laughs> My wife turns around and says, you don't look like thieves. It's all right. And the old lady goes, you never know. <laughs> My wife says, you know, you do look like thieves. Grabs her purse and takes off. But it's just bitter, bitter yeah. old fart. Nasty, bitter, hostile. They want to share it with everybody else. The state slogan in Florida ought to be, misery loves company. <laughs> Believe me. All right, Neil. Well, listen, have you. a wonderful life, pal. See you, Bert. And in closing... See you later. <laughs> Nine minutes after 11 at WIOD, the Boca Del Rey line is available for those of you under the age of 400, 278-9463. Somebody just dropped off in Broward also. Boy, it's, there it goes. It's really like touch and go. Yeah. I had a, a weird thing happen to me uh, this morning. I, I I went over to see Herman and McBean for Did a you? minute. Well, that's pretty weird in itself. Yeah. And Were they doing their usual dirty stuff over there? You bet. And, um... They gave me these uh, this bag of potato chips and asked me to take a chip out of it, and the potato chips were coal black, black yeah. potato chips. You ever heard of such a thing? No. So I did taste one, believe it or not, and it's I still have the taste in my mouth. You know, here an hour and a half later, yeah, <laughs> some water. <laughs> Do you think? Uh, Maybe someone could call in and give me some feedback on those that. Were, those were rescued from the uh, riots, by the way, from one of the stores, <laughs> one of the food stores. Uh, Palm Beach, hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Uh, you're having trouble with Hallandale? Or whatever this is, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm having uh, lots you're, of You're trouble having with problems, Hallandale. there's no question about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, my name is uh, Lieutenant Paramedic Lee Kahn. I've been a member of the fire department for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, critically injured on the job uh, uh, fighting a fire in a single family home. Mm hmm. I got 75% loss of lung function, and I've been out of work uh, since 1980. How, how many more of these contrived calls? What is this, supposed to be in Hallandale? Hallandale, yes. Sir. Yeah, okay. Have a good life, sir. Uh, we have an open line in date, 751-WIOD. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that name? Uh, he's Captain Fung Young Hung Lo, whatever it was there <laughs> at the beginning. Is that what he said? Uh, you know, I mean, some of you folks, really, on a scale of zero, <laughs> let's let's get serious, all right? I mean, I may have been born yesterday, but it was early in the day. 278-WIOD in Boca and Delray, 278-9463. Char Hut is open right now as we speak. OD. Well, I'll be darned. It's 1113 at WIOD. And there's an organization being formed for greyhound adoptions for those of you who want a great pet. And uh, you can... Uncle Lonnie? Uncle? Lonnie. Any organization that's got a guy named Uncle <laughs> Lonnie. Is he related to Billy uh, Tipton? Uncle Lonnie? <laughs> oh, come on. Now, now, look at this number. Sharon. Sharon, are you losing your uh, gourd or something? Is look she, at the number. Oh, think, she, wait a minute. Look at the number that's written down on there, the phone number. Okay? <laughs> Sharon, are you losing it? You've been a victim, Sharon. What kind of a phone number is that? She's not listening to a word that I'm saying in there. You were a victim. What kind of a phone number is this? Uncle Lonnie with a number that ends with four zeros? You I think never. this is legitimate? <laughs> what? I think it's suspect. Yeah, I'm, I'll pass on this for just a minute. Anyway, we've got an open line in date at 751-9463, 751-WIOD. we got a call on the bat line, and um, I can't wait. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the message. What? 
There's nobody on there anymore. Boy, those two in there have really got it together this morning. <laughs> don't they? they are really doing it. Who was that? Who was it? What was it? Oh, God, aren't you glad that the people from the TV are here today? <laughs> this, is, this is what it's all about, believe me. Uh, let's go to a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, there's really somebody there. That's a good start. Uh, there's somebody live, breathe in. I mean, ill for actually at the moment. Uh-oh. Yeah, good connection, sir. What are you on, like a uh, uh, Campbell soup can? No, i got one of these Panasonic cellular phones, but it's a portable, and it's, uh, I've only got a, like a six-inch Okay, aerial. well, when you start speaking English, sir, we'll really appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to tell you, I was coming to Hillsborough. I've got a bit of a spy report, because uh, just um, east of 95 on Hillsborough Boulevard at a gas station, they must be filming a movie or something, because there's big Winnie Bagos there. There's Winnie Bagos, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cameras, <laughs> light. God knows what's going on over there. Yeah. It's probably Burt Reynolds' TV show. Okay, well, thanks a lot, pal. That was a great call. We really appreciate that. Now, what was that all about? No, no, no. Um, no. What is going on with you people? Don't you understand that these are crank calls? I'm not putting that on the air. Yes, that's that's the guy who said his name was like a hung low douchebag among brain. Well, it was a guy a minute ago who sounded like a woman. Well, this no, I don't want I don't want that on the air. We have no way to verify that, and we got cranked a couple of times the other day with people who don't even work for the city. So let them take it up. Uh, tell them to call Action Line, okay? Tell them to call Bob Mayer at Channel Four if they can find a phone book for him to sit on. No. Okay, uh, we have an open line in Bogota. <laughs> no, I'm lo you know what's happening here is like we're losing control of the show, which never happens, okay? We're like losing total control. I don't want to say it's because our friends are here from Channel 7, although it is interesting that they usually don't come by because they're so far away from us, so they usually ignore anything that's going on over here. But now that they've got these insipid, uh, you know, axe murder type shows on the air, now they're, I uh, hope they have the man from Nambla on again real soon, too. I'm sure our friend in the Gables will really like that show. Uh, Hollywood, hello. Neil. Yeah. How you doing? Great. I'm a first time caller. Okay. I'm from upstate New York. Oh, now we're talking, sir. I Ordinarily, we cut him right off because we don't want to get the bird upset. Don't worry about him, okay? Yeah. Uh, I this will be the only thing that's on the report on Channel 7, but this will be the only call that makes it on that's the air. That's correct, because we put the impotent stuff on. Go ahead, pal. Sorry. I want to talk to you about the Canadians that are down here. Now we're going. They're really pissing me off. Because I'm listening, sir. Because there's got to be more to it than that. <laughs> they're, they're, ver they're old. They don't know how to drive. They don't tip when you... Yeah, have you noticed that there are no young French Canadians who come yeah, here? There's nobody under the age the of time. Methuselah's grandmother who comes here from uh, Montreal or Quebec. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I work at a restaurant down at the beach in Hollywood and... and Does it make you apoplectic, sir? Very if much I can so. borrow a word from Steve? Very much so. <laughs> but uh, I was also in the market to, uh, to buy a vet. Yeah. And I was wondering... Uh, uh, a used vet. I was wondering what year, you know, you would recommend. A used one? Well, I never had a used one, so I don't know. I don't want to sound like uh, pseudo-intellectual or anything, but I don't, I have no idea. 86 was a great vet. Yeah. Well, I'm I... talking like maybe 81, 82. Oh, well, somebody will call in and tell us. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll tell you one thing. You've never had a vet? No. Great car. Yeah. Believe me. Friend I don't want to get it. my friends at Toyota Hollywood upset because I love my Supra, too, but the vet is uh, incredible. Yeah. But I just wanted to call. I wanted to ask you a question. I don't know if it'll make you upset but uh it'll make want... me real upset see the way you prefaced it by saying that it's obvious i'm going to be real well, upset. i don't want you i don't want you to get go upset. ahead what's That's the what question saying. pal i can i can handle it i'm sure but uh a friend of mine wants to know if you are really gay or if it's just part of your now oh, let's just, remember, sure. just an act i'm married with four children just remember sir. this calls uh this guy's from upstate new york just keep that in your mind go ahead well what about it i just consider the source yeah see it's not a friend of yours who wants to know is it sir <laughs> No, it is a friend of mine. I swear to God. Why does he want to know? Why does he want to know? Huh? Why does that person want to know? I think he wants to date with that, with that pee pee from Pembroke Pines. Does he really? I think so. Well, I'll tell you oh. one thing. Tell him to sit in the chair and reflect on it. If he looks straight down, maybe you'll find one of his own. Okay, sir. <laughs> it's eleven nineteen at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward at five two four nine four six three five two four WIOD. I think if you're looking for Uncle Lonnie today, you'll find him at Sadie's Buffet. Do you, do you believe that? <laughs> I mean, you. here we get this person, uh, they got calling on the bat line that I just hung <laughs> up on about five minutes ago with this convoluted story that we have no way to check. I don't play those games, okay? I'm not playing those games. Call up Action Line. No, one thing about those places, they always verify. They have the wherewithal and the manpower to verify these things. But we're just trying to put all of that stuff to sleep now, and here somebody wants to start up all over again, okay? Give it a rest. 
And then we got a number that ends with four zeros from a guy named Lonnie, all right? <laughs> Uncle Lonnie. Uncle Lonnie. <laughs> I think Sharon and Nick are like on uh, the same doggy uppers that Disney's on today. <laughs> North Miami Beach, hello. Hello, Neil. Uh, <laughs> Plantation, hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. This is a first-time caller, first-time listener for the past 30 minutes. Yeah. I also have a Corvette. And, well, congratulations. Uh, convertible. Is yours convertible? No, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not in your league. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I haven't listened to AM radio in about 30 years. Really? Yeah, so I'm... Well, how old are you? Forty-two. Oh, much too old, sir. Much too old. Listen, I heard uh, very briefly that you're trying to lose weight over there. No, I've lost 32 pounds. I'm not trying to lose weight. I am losing weight. Mm-hmm. Well, they came out with a study list. You're aware of it. That's my other line. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it sounds like your other line. <laughs> there, huh? Boy, you're that, just full of good stuff. Isn't it? <laughs> that a, uh, a kiss, a kiss burns six calories. Really? I'd like you to try to figure that out. How much do you weigh, sir? About 375? Uh, 158. Wow, that's great. How tall are you? About 4'3"? Close. Okay. Uh, well, listen, have a great day. To you, too, sir. It's 1121 <laughs> at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. Now, aren't these calls a logical response to what I did the first 20 minutes on the show? Do you, uh, when I went no through the rundown of all that sinister uh, deception and crap that went on yesterday... And these are exactly the kind of callers you expect when you're dealing with brain-dead mung brains, okay? Uh, there's an opening in Dade. That's Dade County. Two of them now. They're going out as I'm speaking, okay? 751-WIOD. 751-9463. This is incredible. I think, uh, I think there's some put-up calls here. I don't want to suggest that any of these TV shows, you know, contrive any of this controversy they put on the air. I w far be it for me to suggest that. But I just have this sneaking feeling in a pit of my stomach that this is like a little setup job. Anyway, if you're sick of schlepping all the why are you did cackling? Did you fall out of a letter? No, Dorothy brought those by from the uh, newsroom. She did. I got some wooden nickels. Good old nickels. Dorothy McIntyre brought us by wooden nickels. Two wooden nickels. And uh, actually, they fell out of Henry's pocket when he was on the floor <laughs> doing the 11 o'clock news. <laughs> I've been wondering. Leave it to Henry to have wooden nickels, okay? <laughs> all right, let's uh, go to Miami next. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi, Bert. Hey, how Hi. you doing, pal? All right. Yeah, I went to see Torch Song Trilogy last week. Yeah. And they had a 10 minute spot before the movie on Gulfstream. Did you know anything about those? No. Yeah, well, they have 10 minute spots, spots at this. I don't know if it's only at this only movie theater or at uh, all the cinemas. It was uh, I haven't seen General it. Cinema. I haven't either. It was General Cinema? I think so. It was either General Cinema or. Uh, well, that's great. Did you what? go out to Gulfstream and plunge your brains out? <laughs> no. Well, come on. No. I've got to spread it around, there. pal. What's that? you got to spread it around. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's hey, what also, my dogs say. Also, last week I was watching Channel 7, and they had a commercial for shells on there. It was the first time I saw it. Well, they're, they're finally butching up a little over here next door. They're getting with it. <laughs> your spots over seeing it on the TV. In fact, Here's the a... first sign that they were finally getting with it, I don't see Bill Ross over there anymore. I think that's probably an indication that things are getting a little bit... Uh, <laughs> You're right. A little more realistic over there. I mean, Bill was a wonderful guy, but, you know, when they had to prop him up to do the weather, it was a little ridiculous. Also, uh, can we send any... It was kind of like the Walter Cronice of Channel 7. <laughs> also, uh, do you know what they talked about, the, the different heteros or the uh, transsexuals talked about on Geraldo? Hetero, he, Geraldo had heterosexuals no, on? Well, I got news for you, pal. That's a first for him. No, the transsexuals. <laughs> Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be, that would probably get about an 80 share, because I don't think Geraldo has had any heterosexuals on for months now. No, you're right. I mean, the transsexuals. What about him, sir? Huh? What about him? Well, they, they, they had a woman on there who was, started as a woman, yeah. became a man, got and then, married, and then she said that she was working out with weights, and she didn't like the way her body, or his body looked, so she its went It's body to you, sir. Woman. It's body. <laughs> his body. Oh, it's, these were the transsexuals who went back. Yeah, these are the ones who changed their mind. Right? <laughs> Well, then, then the woman, or the man who became a woman, yeah. got married, got pregnant, mm -hmm. and then wanted to go back to a man after uh -huh. she got pregnant. What a show. Yeah. Well, it's that probably good if you, like, just keep one, if you keep one on the uh, wall, you know, on a hook, just in case you want to tie it back on or something. <laughs> That's right. probably a good idea. Well, when I was making the delivery the other day, I saw an old fart uh, at a bus stop, yeah. and right next to her had to, happened to be right by the road a water puddle, and I couldn't help myself. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Shame on you, I, sir. I was, I was Shame on you. And thinking of you, and yeah. so I went right through it and splashed her. That's terrible, but I would like to have been there to see it. <laughs> okay, you have a good day now. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, now next thing they're going to be saying, well, he's, uh, he's encouraging people to splash water on old people. 27 past 11. I don't really see where it makes a hell of a lot of difference in many of the cases, because where there's no <laughs> sense, there's no feeling anyway. Uh, do we do Miami? Uh, let's go to Plantation. Hello. 
Hello, Davy. You're Davy, right? Yes, I am. Okay, well, I'm glad you know where you are, sir. That's a good start. Neil, my name is also Neil. I'm with Southland Kennels. Mm -hmm. And there's an association called REGAP, R-E-G-A-P, yeah. which stands for Retired Greyhounds as Pets. Really? People hmm. can, lo uh, can contact any of the local tracks, or well, the organization is in St. Petersburg, Florida. So what you think and what you've been profusing about putting greyhounds to sleep unnecessarily is not true. Well, what do you mean it's not true? Anyone that wants a greyhound... Well, 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 but wait a minute. Go there ahead. are two different, two different stories. I'm delighted that you give us the information, but when you say it's not true, it is true. They gas them by the thousands. That's not true. It is true. No, Even the trainers have told me that. No, that's a misnomer and, a, and one of the poor things that the industry has to overcome. That's not true, Neil. Except from someone that makes his living in the sport. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting you said that because I've seen uh, reports on it on, on television. I've talked to all kinds of people, including the last couple of days. You're the first one who says it's not true. Unnecessarily to put dogs to sleep, that's inhumane. Why would anybody do that? Because there are a lot of people out there that are crashing just into the money, and when they have no use for them anymore, then they, they uh, the, get rid of them. No, then they turn these dogs over to the association. Well, now, okay, I, I hope you're right, and we'll check it out, but I have a feeling we'll get some uh, contradictory information, okay? I, we'll I, absolutely, see. I absolutely guarantee you what I'm telling you is Emma, so don't, don't go into it with a negative thought. Okay. They're located in St. Petersburg. If you want, I'll give you my number off the air. No, we'll check it out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. 29 past 11 at WYOD. It sounds encouraging, but I, I just am a little skeptical at mm -hmm. best, okay? Yeah. Possibilities has brought food. It's in uh, the cafeteria downstairs, so you can... Uh... Now, see, we have an interesting dilemma, because Rich has got a smile, a smirk on his face. I am not going to participate. I will not touch any of it, just like I didn't touch any of the stuff that came in yet. Well, I had a little of that corned beef out of that sandwich, mm -hmm. but I didn't touch any of that, and I'm just, I can't participate. Now, you shouldn't either. I don't want to influence you or embarrass or humiliate or degrade you, but if you touch it, I will. <laughs> I'll do the entire rest of the show. Oh, it's, it's also low-calorie salads and more. So they brought some salad. Well, you can go down there and check it out. Why don't you go uh, dig through it now? Because if you don't, it'll all be gone. We yeah, why don't you go guard it for me, would you? No, no, just kind of dig through some? it and bring yeah. some stuff up, and we'll uh, check it out. But I'm not going to touch Thanks. any of that pasta. We thank our friends at Postabilities in Fort Lauderdale, and we already know ahead of time their food is fantastic because they brought it many times mm -hmm. before, but I'm just, uh, I can't do it. I got my Nutrisystem, I got my tomato soup here, and my uh, stuff, and everything is marvelous, okay? <laughs> and if I do get carried away, Linda and Susan are coming later. I'm, bah, 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 bah. I don't want to have to listen to that, all right? Let's go to Plantation. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Neil? Yes, sir. Good morning, Glenn. Hi. How are you? Good. First time call. I'm a little nervous. Well, don't be nervous, sir. Okay. Just, there's nobody listening today anyway. It's an off day. <laughs> I'm serious. It's just one of those off days. They don't, they're not into anything that I'm talking about today. It's Saturday, right? Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to share the story with you uh, that we experienced Saturday night. We went to a uh, popular east side restaurant and valet parking. My wife and I got out. It was for a surprise You didn't stiff the valet parker now, did you? No, sir. Okay. No, but uh, my wife's carrying these Mylar balloons because we're going to a surprise party. And as we're walking in, two orange bluish heads are standing there waiting for their cars to uh, be delivered. And I'm watching one of the ladies looking at the Mylar balloon, and I'm watching the eyes roll back in her head because it was shiny. As they roll back in her head, she grabs the lady next to her, and both of them fall right on their backs, on their mm -hmm. butts. Yeah. Like a fool, I go to lift one of them because I was startled. And as a lifting one, I, I could hear Glenn laughing in the background. She points to my wife. She says, she pushed me. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, yep. Don't ask. Now, we're sitting in the bar. We're 40 minutes early for dinner, and they paged the party's name that we had reservations for. And believe it or not, they came back in. Uh, they threatened lawsuits. And my wife says, called the police. Of course, they never came. But the uh, first thing I said to my wife was, Doctor, my lips are blue. What do I do? <laughs> Your lips are blue, yeah. You know, it was just uh, amazing. It was just amazing. I said to my wife, we got to call Neil Monday morning, you know. Which we didn't have time for, but uh, I thought you'd appreciate the story, guys. We sure do. <laughs> anyway, one other thing. Yeah. Because I'm not out of material yet. The guy that called in for um, wanting to know which was the better Corvette, 81, 82. Yeah. He calls back, tell him I have an 82 Winnie Bago for him. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable. Boy, you talk about a guy with desperate material. It's 1132 <laughs> at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. The audience is just on their ears.
from the uh, revelations that we gave at the beginning of the program. They're speechless. <laughs> no, they really are. They're speechless. They're overwhelmed and overcome with emotion. And uh, you'll be overcome with emotion when you hear about the lowest rate that... Number one with two bullets already. It's 1140 at WIOD. We have two, uh, one open line. It's in Dade County, 751-9463. 751-WIOD. Del Rey, hello. How's it going, Neil? Okay. Uh, that, that Terrence Fireman that called earlier? Yeah. Okay, he's uh, 
full of BS because I know that voice. Well, I, listen, you I don't want to get into it. I'm not going to get sucked into one of these deals where we get one of these phony calls, or even if it's a yeah. real call. If they got a grievance with the city of Hallandale, we don't do that kind of a show, okay? Yeah. And like I said, you know, we're doing our best to put all of that in the past, and we'll play the satire like the thing we just played, yeah. but I'm not looking for an ongoing war or people to, you know, use their beefs with the city on this show. Yeah, he has no beef, though. He's... He calls up Do you hear what I just said, sir? Are your ears not uh, being penetrated? No, I'm hearing what you're saying. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay, that's the end of There he goes. So he had nothing to say. Mm -mm. Boy, this is great. Possibility sent over along with that um, pasta that you're eating. Mm -hmm. It's good. They sent over some um, a great salad, a huge salad that Rich is eating like out of a trough. But anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> no, there's nothing here. There's like lettuce and there's um, red cabbage. And uh, broccoli yeah. and tomatoes. It's uh, great. And some of us aren't even putting any dressing on it, are we, Rich? <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, here's a description of what they sent. It says, um, locale attempt at bringing food over. Hope you can taste everything. Well, I'm not having the pasta, guys, but we appreciate it. It's uh, a healthy salad, assorted filled greens with fresh steamed veggies, marinated artichoke hearts, hearts of palm, plum tomatoes, and fresh marjoram. Mm-hmm. My favorite. And a tortellini basilic is what you had cold pasta salad and yeah. rich, fresh plum, tomato, and basil sauce, assorted fettuccines, et cetera, et cetera. It's great possibilities. They're super folks, and they're on the uh, 17th Street Causeway in Fort Lauderdale, okay? Okay. And we're doing very well. Rich and I are just sticking with the um, a little bit of the salad here and not going crazy, okay? And tomorrow, um, I just mentioned this in passing because I'm not going to have any of it, but uh, Boone is coming from Siam's Doll with Thai food tomorrow. So you folks from the TV can see it's a little bit difficult to stay on a diet uh, with all the food that comes in every day, but we're doing our best. West Palm Beach, hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing, buddy? Okay, pal. Good. Got What's a, up, dude? Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the Adrian Dantley Mark Aguirre trade? I don't I don't uh, pay any attention to you that. You don't follow basketball? No. Okay. Only, only during the playoffs. It was a major trade. I'm from Detroit, and I was disappointed with it. Really? I got a funny You're story. You're from Detroit? I sure am. Well, hell, let's Florida. reminisce a little bit about Detroit and the London Chop House that just closed up. Yeah. That'll get to the bird up scent. I uh, was up at my hash bash up there in Ann Arbor a few years, few years, few years back. Mm -hmm. Got a funny story for you. I was up there for a funeral. and uh, Well, that's pretty funny. <laughs> the two two uncles of the deceased yeah. were up on the front carrying the casket, mm -hmm. and it was icy and snowy, and it was pretty bad. Oh, uh, no, don't tell me they slipped and fell, and it opened up, and the stiff fell out. You're not going to tell me that. Yeah. And they, oh, it, it fell come on. In, the, the, ca the casket fell into the, went through a RX drugstore. <laughs> Smack through the glass. Well, but the, it, let's see, it was good that it pharmacy. went through the drugstore because if anybody inside got cut up or anything, they could probably get something at the pharmacy right away. Well, listen, the dead body <laughs> smacked into the into the uh, pharmacy department. The cadaver stood up and said, hey, you guys think they can stop this coffin? Yeah, that's cute. Um, now, I have a story here that goes right <laughs> along with this. Okay. I the one that kind of sits with you, you know what I mean, like a bad meal. <laughs> I've been holding this for two hours, and finally it's the Well, it's about time, time you let it. go of it, okay? Now, do you see the headline? Wrong woman in casket mm -hmm. is the headline. Uh, now, let me just read this to you, sir. Okay. The mourners remarked as they gathered around Helen Mahaney's casket that death Helen had... Helen died? That death no, had... No, it turned out it was really Eleanor Roosevelt inside. That's right. Okay. They said that death had changed her. She didn't look like the same woman, they thought. Well, guess what? <laughs> she wasn't. The funeral home had prepared two bodies for burial, 90-year-old Mahoney and 93-year-old Margaret Manning. The they body, look alike. The body was wearing the right dress, holding the right prayer book, but the woman whom uh, family and friends had gathered to mourn was lying across the kinda hall. Like, kind of like Elvis's funeral, wasn't it? <laughs> what? Were what? All, now, when are you guys going to do a show on Elvis being alive? Aren't you going to do that soon? Never. No, no, I'm talking about the TV pe uh, people here from Seven, because that's a... Uh, I've read all the books on that, and that's fascinating. They, the people who were there at the funeral said that mm -hmm. when they viewed the body in a casket, it didn't look anything like him. And then there yeah. were those people who said that it was a wax dummy uh -huh. and that they had a I've refrigeration unit in the bottom to keep it from melting. <laughs> and well, that I, there I, were two pepperoni and cheese pizzas underneath the <laughs> casket, too. Well, Helen had bluish hair and Eleanor had bluish green hair. Bluish? Oh, so wow. Well. should have been able to tell you to tell them apart. Yeah, you're hey, right. Neil, when it comes to the, the gentleman that was harassing you about uh, taking those boys on the trip and all that, yeah, I'm surprised it, it, it took them that long. Because when you get some of these gentlemen and, and old ladies who are so overly conservative and hear the fun comments you make about boys, and you know, I'm surprised it took them that long to harass. Well, I'm going to say something that I've always said, and that it is, it doesn't cost anything to look, okay? <laughs> and if there are no, seriously, yeah, if, but there's been times in the past they know that you haven't just looked. Really? In the past? Like who? I don't Anybody know. Anybody we know? 
I'm, oh, I'm sure sometime in your past. No. Okay. Wrong, sir. Um, how, how old are we talking about, sir? 45, 50, 60? 25 and under. 25 and under is boys? Yeah. When you talk about an older gentleman, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it was a, if it was a 25 and under girl, you, I, I would harass you. Yeah, okay. Well, let me say this to you, sir. I confess, okay? <laughs> hey, I got a, uh, my boss, when I told him I was on hold waiting to talk to you, he described you, and I don't feel to you this way, but he described you. He goes, oh, you mean that real foul, fat gay guy? <laughs> yeah. This is a great call, sir. Mm -hmm. you, any other shot? Any other shots you'd like to take? See, I always, I always no, like. No, no, I always you like. Describe yourself as everything in that way. I That's always like funny. calls where they start out, you know, with a couple little stick lock, and then they move, then they move <laughs> into the real good that. shots, into the homophobia. <laughs> Come on. I don't keep feel going. that way about you. I'm just saying no. it's funny that he came in and described you. No, that's why you you're that concerned that I'm having sex with the four-year-old children, right? Sir? <laughs> I didn't say four. It's a twenty-five hundred year old girls or boys. Oh, I see. So in other words, I mean, if, if I had in other words, if a bird girl. ogles about some young uh, Twinkie who's uh, like say nineteen or twenty, you would be upset about that. If I had sex with a nineteen year old girl, I, I deserve to be in trouble. How old are you? Twenty-eight. And if you had sex with a nineteen year old girl, you'd be in trouble. I think so. Where do you live? <laughs> what planet do you live on? Okay. If, uh, How old does she have to be? Like seventy-two? I suggest under you go over. To, are you near Winmore, sir? No. Trust me, I, no, I'd get over there right now, pal. I'd go up to Winmore, man. I'm telling you, they would be just dying for you up there, all right? Literally and figuratively. I think April's only 24, so I guess Well, keep I, your hands off, yeah, okay? Because this trouble. sexual harassment on the job has got to stop now. <laughs> so you better govern yourself accordingly, okay? I guess so. Boy. There's going to be a new Elvis series with Elvis's That's daughter right. in the cast. That's Isn't that right. exciting? Yeah. Well, I'm really... Um, it's a moving experience for me. It's 1147 <laughs> at WIOD. 1151 at WIOD. Boy, that last guy, that was incredible, wasn't it? Wasn't He's it? 28, and he said that if he um, <laughs> had like a little encounter with a 19-year-old young lady, that he would get in trouble. I thought 18 was the legal age. Uh... In the state of Florida, 17 is the age of consent. But okay? 18 to be safe. I mean, 18 over is 18. an adult. Yeah. But 17 is the age of consent. But you must understand that there are... 19-year-olds, both boys and girls, who are like 10 years old, and there are 19-year-olds who are like 40. No question. As far as maturity. Oh, yeah. No question. But um, when a 28-year-old guy... Now, what... See, I, I should have kept him on for a while. I didn't want to really explore it because I was afraid that he was on his way really to win more. <laughs> but what does he think is uh, an adequate age? I mean, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Or as my mother used to say, beauty is in the eyes of the behelfer. <laughs> now, Dr. Really? Greyhound, this is no, I made that up. Dr. <laughs> Greyhound, Lonnie Altman, known as Uncle Lonnie, is an insurance agent, uh -huh. and it is not a fake. The number is 769 0 0 0 0. That's oh Adopt a Greyhound. So there are people out there that would like to adopt a dog. I'll call Uncle Lonnie. Although, wouldn't you think they'd want to use that number to do business? You would think. But maybe that's. Maybe Lonnie uh, doesn't have a lot of business. I don't know. <laughs> 769 0 0 0 0. Oh. See, Sharon acted like, you know, she was confused as to why I thought that was a bogus number. But it is a little unusual, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, to me, it is. Yeah. 769 four zeros. Okay. So if you want to adopt a Greyhound, and if there's any other uh, Greyhound people, I, that guy that called about Regap in St. Pete, I mean, I'm glad to know about that organization. Mm -hmm. But if he really believes that I'm going to believe that uh, they're not doing a number on those greyhounds, and good luck to them. Uh, Roger left me something very useful. It's uh, called Video Dog, the world's easiest pet. It's on videotape. It's like great. having your own dog, but you don't have to clean up after it. <laughs> this is you great. You just have it on your VCR. <laughs> so yep. I'm going to take that home and show it to the puppies. They'll probably go nuts. They'll love it. It'll be their favorite. I think that bone will probably like clean something out of the system in that um, <laughs> really? in Winnie. I really do. In a golden retriever, because that dog now is like come to life. Because the first few days we had it, it was like had a cold and it was not, just not feeling all that well. But it's got so much energy now, like an elephant. Well, I'm not going to try. And it does other things like an elephant too. I don't want to get too graphic, uh, but I got news for you, man. When that dog gets full size, I'm going to have to rent like an outdoor auditorium or something, like the Orange Bowl. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm not going to try the same uh, method on me and see if it brings, you know, gives me energy or anything. I'll just let it go. <laughs> well, you said it brought the Now, I just want to mention, I just life. want to tell you this up front, because this is going to be the people that were just here disrupting the show. They're from Inside Edition. Is that the Story. name of it? Inside Story? Yeah. Inside Story, which, which is on Channel channels. 7. Yeah. And that's going to be on sometime next week. We'll let you know when. And it's going to be a real razor blade job. I just know that, because they were just too friendly. It's going to be a slice job. 
but uh, it'll be on, and that's all that counts. It's that's good right. publicity. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, hello. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Neil and Rich, I'm a first-time caller. I don't normally listen to AM radio. But... Neil and Rich? Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. How you doing, Rich? Yeah, he said, uh, okay. Hello. He said hello. Hello. Okay, you guys really converted me. I just got a couple of comments to make. Why do I get the feeling that this call is going to be um, something bizarre? Go ahead. Uh, I, don't I don't think so. All right. Just hang in there, okay? Well, I'm uh, hanging. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm 35 years old, and uh, just uh, making a comment about the last guy's call, I thoroughly enjoy having sex with a 19-year-old female, okay? Great. Any red-blooded American real man would, all right? <laughs> okay, now, comment about these old farts. That well, I guess that friend. leaves me out, pal. <laughs> well, this oh, is a, a real man's call. Yeah. This, I told you, it's a macho call. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, these, these old farts that jam up our roads, tie up our traffic, and have this over, overwhelming desire to lay on the horns as soon as the light turns green. I mean, even if they're the 15th or 20th car in traffic, okay? Here's a cure for them. You want these portable butane boat horns? I think twice. It's uh, <laughs> 11.55 at WIOD. God. We have an open line in um, Broward, 524-9463. I just mentioned in passing that that last call, that was for Neil and Rich. Uh, I had nothing to do with that. And I dumped it. Yeah, I had nothing to do with that call. I'm yep. exonerated. Listen, to pal, we'll see you around the old horn up in Pahokee, okay? <laughs> wow, here's a caller for uh, the bird. Hello. Hi, uh, let me mention one thing first, that Roy Orbison song. Yeah. It brings back memories because... The first time I listened to Roy Orbison was probably on FUN, and it still sounds just as bad on AM. It's a lie. I am not a Nazi. <laughs> uh, Glenn. Was he ever on FUN? No. No, he was no. on QAM. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, I'm radio. going up to Plant City for the uh, Strawberry Festival. Good heavens. That's my favorite, you know, Plant City. <laughs> Well, I figured I'd equal things out a little bit. Glenn, or, uh, Neil's got a call from upstate and the last guy from Detroit. So. Thank God. Do you want me to bring you back some strawberries? I would just jump through hoops if you could do that. They have the yeah, best bring strawberries. bring Humphrey Bogart with you, too. They have the best <laughs> strawberries in the country. It's a Strawberry capital of the world. Yeah, absolutely. You'll discover they're the best. Uh, that would be wonderful. The yeah. One thing about Char Hut that I love. Now, they closed the one that I used to go to. It was on 7th Avenue and 183rd. Yeah. Uh, and you can see them preparing it. I had a friend that used yeah. to work at Burger King, and he'd be back there flipping burgers, and he told me that when he started to Oh, sweat, don't say it, sir. Don't say it. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Don't say it. He would don't, take say it. The don't say it. Ah. Don't say the it. Have a nice day. <laughs> that was sufficient. I think that was enough. 11.57 at WIV. But we're, I almost had to, um, you know... They're getting a little carried away here today. A little rambunctious now, aren't you? You're not responding to anything that I'm talking about, but you're all getting real rambunctious. Well, that's good. That's, that's the first sign of being alive, baby, when that's you right. start getting a little rambunctious. That's right. And then a few hours after that, you start breathing, which is really good. <laughs> Here's a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing, Bert? We're doing great, pal. How's it going? I was, hey. I was listening to uh, Ron Harrison on INZ because I like his sports report. Do you? Yeah, and he was... Yeah, he really knows those sports, man. <laughs> Mostly water sports. Oh, well, let's not get into Ooh. that. Anyway, he was doing the uh, Toyota commercial for Hollywood Toyota. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I guess uh, he was talking about the turbo. And he said, I guess you've heard uh, Neil and Kane and those guys at the other station. They're driving them, and they just love them. So huh. <laughs> that was part of the commercial. Is then, that what he said? Yes, sir. That Ron. I always liked Ron a lot. <laughs> and then when... Now, he's a good guy. He is. In fact, he's one of the few. There are a handful of people over there who are great folks, mm -hmm. and I wish him luck that he'd get out of there, boy. He's like a prisoner. He's been trying to get out of there for a long time. Yeah, I only tune him in just to listen to his sports section. I don't want to get him in trouble or anything, but he's been desperate to get out of there for... He has. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he's a real good talent. He's a great guy. He's a good guy. He knows nothing about sports, but he admits it. <laughs> and, uh... I also wanted to mention that uh, my daughter dates a guy that works for O'Donnell Kennels. He uh, races greyhounds. Yeah. And uh, she listens to your show, and she called me up, and she said that guy that called up, he's just full of it because what we were talking about, uh, putting the dogs down, that happens all the time. I know it does. It I've, seen, I've seen stories, lengthy uh, exposés on television about that. 
and he said, she told me, it does happen, Dad, and I've seen it happen myself, and I, I just can't take it. It's well, terrible. that guy's obviously inside the industry and is trying to clean up the image, you know, doesn't want the public to know what really goes on. If they, you know, it's, it's really a disgrace. Oh, for sure. Also, I called you when you were in your INZ days. Yeah, I got 20 seconds. Uh, okay, no, I'm the guy that used to manage the Burger King over there on Sunny Isles on Collins at 187th Street. Yeah. And I'm the one that called the police on the old farts that were stealing. Oh, yeah, congratulations. Uh -huh. In fact, that? Uh, that guy is flipping in the uh, kitchen right now with that guy. Have a great day. Take it easy. Bye. Okay, uh, yeah. April Wortham is standing by with the new news now. And then we'll come back at uh, 12.05. Steve this afternoon with the uh, Wall Street Psychotics. Uh -huh.